Good morning. My name is Pastor Harry Craighead, and we thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning in the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destination. Today we're going to talk about prosecution, a summons, an arraignment, a formal charge or accusation of a serious criminal charge or a crime. We're talking about indictment. Through faith in Christ, we receive God's pardon and escape indictment from sin's penalty. Yes. In addition to their willingness to yield to conscience's reproof, spiritual believers should also learn how to discern the indictment of the enemy. Amen. And to take with us this week, when our opponents justify indictments against us, we can steadfastly deny the false charges or we can wait patiently until God vindicates us. Amen. If you ever watched any kind of police procedural show, you probably learned everything you know about the criminal law procedures or processes that it goes through. You see the suspect get arrested. The, then he's Mirandarized. That is, he's read his rights. Mm -hmm. And then they're in court soon after. But in reality, the process of trying someone for a crime is very different. One of the first things that happens in this process is an indictment of, the, of a person for the crime. An indictment is a formal accusation based upon available evidence that a person has committed a serious crime. Yes. If there's enough evidence to prove that the person has committed a crime, then they're indicted. Yes. There were indictments brought against Jesus. The first charge was that he was a revolutionary agitator. But throughout his ministry, Jesus clearly avoided any activity that would exhibit such a motive. Yes. The second charge was that Jesus forbid his hearers to give tribute to Caesar. Yes. But Jesus replied in Matthew twenty two twenty one, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things yes. that are God's. Yes. The third charge was that Jesus had claimed to be king. But Jesus never made such a claim directly. The religious leaders wanted to get rid of Jesus because they were terrified and jealous of his self-increasingly popularity with the people. Their alarm heightened uh, particularly after the resurrection of Lazarus. They had admitted to one another that the world has gone after him and that they set to destroy him by any means, even if it meant they would bear false witness against him. Yes. Many years before their indictment of Jesus, God indicted Israel. Romans chapter 10 verse 21 from the Message Bible tells us, then he Clapped at, then he capped it with damning indictment. Day after day after day, he beckoned Israel with open arms, and got nothing for their got nothing for my trouble but cold shoulders and icy stares. Israel refused and rejected God's gracious invitation. Israel closed chose to remain disobedient and obstinate. Yes. People today are doing the same thing. Yes. They, are, they close their minds despite the clear evidence and refuse to consider the truth of Christ as, their, say, as the true Savior of the world. Yes. In the very nature of things, an indictment should and understand any enlightened system of legal philosophy clearly advise the accused of the accurate nature of the charge against him. Yes. 
Under no circumstances and no condition would it be possible for a prisoner to prepare their defense. Most modern codes have sought to promote clearness and certainty in indictments by requiring that, that only one charge or one crime in one indictment. And in a language so clear and simple that the nature of the offense charge may be clearly understood. Jesus was indicted for blasphemy. Blasphemy for claiming to be the son of God. Now some people say that Jesus was sinless. So if he claimed to be the son of God and God himself, if he was wrong, he would be a sinner. But he was sinless. The evidence of the leading witness constituted the charge. There was no charge, no formal indictment. Until the person spoke and spoke in public assembly, the prisoner was scarcely an accused man. When they spoke and the evidence of the two agreed, it formed a legal charge, slander, or indictment as well as the evidence of its truth. Man's concept of sin and death is far different from what the Bible teaches. Just what a person calls sin depends upon where he is standing, upon his environment, his training, heritage, and his beliefs. Few people are willing to admit to God and to confess that sin is basically a violation, an indictment of God's law and will, rebellion and civil disobedience against him and the way he has told man to live. Thus, not only will there be an indictment against them, they will be judged by Jesus in the last day. Submit your, your body, soul, and spirit to God and bypass the harsh judgment of a guilty indictment. Amen? Amen. 